Facebook and hope and this is also that people can share it and watch the video if not able to listen to it so introduce yourself sir yeah. hi I'm Hamish OB actually I, I know I bought you a, a present uh, that's what I love <laughs> yeah yeah art, and art and art for art's sake I yeah. love collecting you know yeah. I, I do I love collecting I collected a a piece yesterday or I think might have been Monday from uh, from a student at uh, Monote and it was just on the wall I said who did this and J Jade Morgan goes that guy and I said can I have one so he printed one out and signed it cool so it all goes on my wall man all right. awesome. I, I have to frame this one yeah yeah that one's all right. called South Sea South all right, this, Paradise look at that if you're live on on Facebook you can see that all right yeah. so tell us about yourself and I mean you just did an um, exhibition last week so I mean it was amazing I mean wow I, I, um, I love collage and I love putting things together and I did that myself when I was I had a prostrate problem a couple of years ago in about in 2000 sometime and I just was bedridden for two weeks and that's what I did for my, and I gave it away to my friends yeah. so I don't have it it's <laughs> huge A4 cardboards that I did as a story for my friends and I don't have it was, I think I did two of them and the two girls got got one each and when I looked at it I thought man I use that that's what I use that for I use that for healing myself to get my brain off my pain yeah and, cool and so tell us about that so we had a, um, so last year I applied for a, uh, a grant um, called the Media Grants Award, mm -hmm. which was um, uh, given out by the New Zealand Mental Health Foundation, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, they give out uh, some money to run a creative project. I heard about that. They did just that recently, just this month they were doing one. Yeah, yeah. So it's come out again, and you can apply for it uh, again, and they'll give you some funding. So they rang over Christmas and said that uh, I'd been awarded the, wow. the grant. And what I what I proposed to do was to do a, an exhibition about recovery. Yeah. And, uh, you know, recovery comes in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. I, I had this thought that, you know, am I recovered yet? Yeah. What does it mean to get over something? Yeah. And so I put an open call out to artists in the community. Yeah. Uh, if they identified as being in recovery, whether it was from addiction or, yeah. or, or suicide or trauma or anxiety, mm -hmm. that they wanted to come together and make some art. Yeah. And, and that's what we did. So uh, we got together at To Call Fly Print Trust uh, yeah. once a week as a group and, and we connected with each other. Um, as strangers, but on, on the things that were similar to us. Yeah. You know, that's that we're all in recovery and, and we wanted to talk about it in some mm -hmm. way. And so every week we had like a theme and we discussed different aspects, you know, mm -hmm. what kept us uh, connected to our communities, yeah. what did recovery mean, and, you know, some of the answers that we come up with weren't really what we expected. So we, uh, we changed our, you know, our thoughts about it. Yeah. And we made a bunch of works. How long was it? How long? How many weeks was this? Um, we made the works over sort of ten weeks. Wow. Um, so a pretty short period, but the project went on for about sixteen weeks because we went into the photography studio at the Shutter Room, okay. and uh, and Ali Smith photographed all, all of our works. And this is Ali from um, from North Tech. Yep. Yep. She photographed most of our works, and uh, and Lenny from uh, Creative. Creative Northland. He curated the show, so he wow. chose because we'd made, you know, more works than we could kind of afford to get uh, yeah. photographed or put on the wall. So he kind of went through and and curated a show out of it, and then those works went to the studio in the shutter room, got photographed, and then Neil Martin, uh, uh, who's got a, a printing a, a, a creative printing company uh, here in town, uh, printed them all out on uh, cotton rag paper. Oh, so that's what it was. I was yeah. trying to figure out what it was printed on. So it's cotton rag. What does that mean? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's like a high grade archi archival paper that's made from cotton. Wow, and I didn't even realize they could make paper from cotton. Yeah, and and that's traditionally how paper was made, and all mm. sort of high grade handmade paper is is made, you know, either from cotton or some kind of um, plant product. You know, yeah. we mostly think about it as timber or you know wood yeah. paper. Um, yeah, I reckon we should get more into hemp. hemp yeah, paper hemp paper. Because <laughs> the, you can grow so much more hemp in a smaller area than you get from a pine tree. Yeah, because and, and we've got the a fiber tradition. And it's stronger. We've got a tradition of flax paper, harakiki exactly. paper in New Zealand, yeah. and um, it was going to be a big thing globally, actually. Yeah. Uh, they were going to use um, harakiki paper to make money. Yeah. And 
that's what money was going to get printed on. Uh, this is, this, so we've gotten away from all these things that are actually good and natural. And we've, um, you know, talking about, you know, paper, the simplest thing is paper. And we have a resource in New Zealand, you know, flex. Yeah, they can make a really high quality, strong yeah. paper. So why aren't we doing industry waste? This is what I, I keep asking questions about these things, you know, on Facebook. It's like, well, what is our district council not looking at? You know, okay, there's not enough unemployment. Well, I mean, not enough jobs. Well, why don't we create jobs by actually looking at what we can do? Like, why can't we have industry on flex? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not sure. I know historically there was a, there was a problem with um, distribution, uh -huh. and uh, and right in, in early early days of colonial New Zealand, where mm. they were building up the industry uh, of flex, yeah. um, uh, uh, the, the walls got in the way. Yeah. And my understanding is um, because they couldn't get the product from New Zealand, they mm. went with a, a, a secondary inferior product from another country. Yeah. And that's why it never kind of flourished to, to, you know, mm. to the extent it was. But I'm not sure what happened yeah. post that era. I think now we're just sort of looking back into that sort of and going, well, now we have access to anybody anywhere in the world. And like we can drop ship within two weeks. Yeah. Anything, anywhere. And, you know, I, I look at that as, with the comic books. We can drop ship comic books from China within two weeks. Yeah, you know, amazing. If we, if we don't have to um, take it to America to sort out, we can drop it here in two weeks. So it's like, you know, um, so there is no need to have walls anymore. And um, so, and talking about walls. So you had um, these 16 weeks, um, got them printed on paper. So what was the next process? Well, we, we framed them up, you know, I mean... The the process was experiencing the whole uh, the roller coaster ride of having an exhibition mm, mm. Uh, to put your heart on paper yeah. um, to to speak your word out loud, especially yeah. some you know in an area that's quite stigmatized. You know, stigma still is so heavy, heavy in our communities when talking about mental health and yeah. addictions, especially. Um, yeah. Not many people say, "Hi, I'm a, I'm an addict," and you know, I'm in yeah. recovery from that now. Mm. Um, and to, to say that you, you know you've you've experienced any of these things and that, and that you're trying to get better from it or you got better or wherever you stand in that yeah. line and then uh, put it in a gallery, there was a whole whole bunch of roller coaster ride of emotions mm -hmm. that everyone in the in the project experienced and people were like, no, I can't do that and freaking <laughs> out and uh, and some people are, yeah. oh, I don't know which one to put in. Can I put that yeah. in? And uh, and we all had to be really brave and, and yeah. stand up and and uh, put our hearts on our sleeve, really. And yeah. so it was that whole experience of uh, not only making a piece of work that talked about your own personal experience, but also then putting it in a public domain. Yeah. And part of the thing is uh, Gareth uh, came from Channel North and filmed. Uh, oh, Gareth is a uh, Mocklin, right? Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. an amazing guy. And, yeah. uh, and, he, and, he, and so we did a little documentary about what That's everyone cool. experienced uh, in the project and, yeah. uh, and we played that um, alongside the images. Yeah. So we sort of had a, a, a multimedia um, yeah. idea. I love that. I love that. I think it's, I think a lot of times, and this is what Megan, Dick, um, Megan Dickinson said to me, you know, like we, when you have something in the gallery, people... It's hard for people to go into that if you're not in, if you not haven't been grown up in that environment yeah. where you, as a child you haven't gone into a museum and then looked at art. If you ever as a child you haven't grown up or in your teens gone into a art gallery and looked at art, and so you know um, she mentions making it more accessible and by having a documentary you can put that online yeah, and share yeah, around sure. the world and yep. people could actually watch that and actually relate to an artist's point of view without actually having to talk to the artist. And I think that's another thing that we've been allowed to do through connectivity, through the media now, uh, which has been held back in, in the past that we couldn't do because it would be like the Adi Fati artist. Yeah. You know, with this attitude or like, oh, don't talk about my art. You don't understand it. To now it's like, well, this is what, what I'm talking about. No, and those barriers are breaking down. Yeah. So earlier in the year I worked on a project called Hit Hakano yeah. with alternative education. Yeah. And, uh, and the students down in the old education um, system mm. who are no longer in mainstream education yeah. uh, we took a bunch of photos together mm. um, around the community and they interviewed figures in the community uh, and 
and they had an exhibition yeah. at the shutter room uh, of their work, and many of them stood at the door. Yeah. So they didn't, they couldn't step over the line into the gallery or yeah. to talk or, about their own work. Yeah, yeah, to know even stand with their own work. Yeah. You know the, the the feelings that it evoked in them when they stepped over the door, the sense of pride. Although they were all yeah. staunch as hell, yeah. like oh, this is not really that cool. Yeah. But I could tell that they were very, you know, very proud of they it. were very proud of their work. Yeah. And um, um, but that you know that barrier exists about um, mm. hey, my my work is on the wall, and yeah. um, and I can be proud about what I what I made, and especially for someone who's had very little opportunity for pride in the community. You yeah. know, they've been expelled from school, they've been yeah. in trouble with the police all, all their lives, and mm. uh, and now all of a sudden someone's saying, hey, you know, you're worthy. Yeah, you know, and and, that's and, what I love about, um, uh, the thing is that a lot of us as artists, we don't think it is worthy. Yeah. Until someone steps out um, who doesn't know it, it's worth, um, you know, doesn't know you personally, can go, whose work is that? Like I did with that gentleman, I said, well, I like that because that's, I'm into that, and I, that I really like it, so I want it on my wall, and it's on my wall now, Yeah. you know, and because I like it, and so I think when you have someone saying to you, you then become from here, your self-worth goes to here, no, and, it's true, and, then the net, and, then, and then somebody else says, then go here, then you go, oh, now I can understand, now I can go into a gallery and put it on the wall and be, say, this is my work. You yeah, know? yeah, and, and yeah. actually talk to it, you know, and, yeah. and that, that's an emotional process and you really grow through that process. Mm. So, you know, when I have a, when I get to participate or work with a project like this, um, the object of the game is people grow through the struggle mm. of, of that. And I remember the first time I got uh, some, some work in an exhibition in Auckland and I went yeah. down, they were a large piece and I walked into the gallery and I was I was physically overwhelmed yeah. by seeing my work on the wall. I couldn't look up at them. Yeah. And I realized that there was a there was a psychological and emotional, physical um, uh, change and growth going on mm. by embarking on the whole idea of making a piece of work, putting it on the wall, and letting other people see it. Yeah. Um, that is really uh, uh, challenging. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I remember when we were, when we were at um, Polytech and, and, you know, with Applied Arts, and you're right, we went to Auckland and we went to visit different galleries, and so I was okay, I, you know, because we'd come back and put our own work on Jeff Wilson's yeah. walls, and we'd be okay with it, but having someone who hasn't experienced that... No, they've got to go through a whole thing, and you know, yeah. one of my students said to me just recently, I don't know why you... You would choose to do this, yeah. you know. She signed up for the uh, for the project because she wanted to give something new a go and yeah. have some challenging experiences. But she certainly learned that there's a there's a whole raft of feelings that are now engaged, things mm. that you have to overcome and yeah. uh, experience, but move on from uh, during the process of making mm. a piece of art and exhibiting it. Mm. That really uh, uh, I mean, that sets up a whole bunch of challenges. Yeah. Same valuing art, and um, I learned. Um, I mean, I, I found that I had to go through this transition myself with the value of things. It's like value to you is different to value to somebody else, and so if you're exhibiting, you let the curator decide what the value is. Yeah, and so that was tough for everyone yeah. on the project too, because they had to let go of their personal feelings about yeah. the art. <coughs> And, uh, and let someone else pick it up and they say, why is he choosing that piece? Yeah. You, know, what is the, you know, what is it about that piece that yeah. um, speaks to the curator that he feels like that is the voice he wants? Mm. Why mm. didn't he choose that piece? And, and this is a whole other raft of things. And, yeah. um, you know, and it all talks to people's self-esteem and their value and, uh, and you know, <laughs> to overcome challenges or in those areas really yeah. help you grow. And, um, I mean... We were talking earlier with um, Rob and you talking about depression and stuff. A lot of artists I've noticed, I mean, I suffer from manic depression myself and I'm always open about that um, because I don't want to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. No, no, I'm still dealing with it. Yeah. But um, I was online yesterday um, with a friend and she was saying about something uh, about ADHD and, and having that anxiety attacks and stuff like that. And that... Like you're talking about anxiety itself there, I mean, 
doing a piece of work that's putting your, you know, what they say, heart on your sleeve. But yet you're yeah. not putting your heart on your sleeve, you're putting it on the wall. Yeah. And you're creating something and anybody can go, oh, that's crap. Oh, that's amazing. And that one person who says it's crap out of the 99, or the 100, I'd say, is going to affect you more than the other 99. And, I, and I've been talking to people about that. How do you deal with that? And so have you noticed that among the people that have been working, how they deal with something negative like that? Is there anything, any kind of answers that you've found that they've dealt with? Because anything 